Amazon's union battle in Alabama continues. Jennifer Bates, an Amazon worker and union advocate, will testify in front of the Senate Budget Committee this week. The main focus, income inequality flowing on at Amazon. Let's talk more about this and welcome in management consultant and top leadership coach James Kerr. He's also the author of the new book, Indispensable, Build and Lead a Company Customers Can't Live Without. James, great to see you. Great to be here, John. Thanks. It's become kind of, um, you know, in vogue to hit Jay Jeff Bezos and some of these billionaires because, you know, it, it doesn't always look like they have the best interests of their customers in mind or the American public in mind. They're, I guess, focused more on their stock price. But is that a long-term success strategy? You know, Bezos is stepping down. Obviously, he feels like he can't, you know, run the company the way he used to. Well, I, I wonder, John, you know, um, yeah, he's got Jassy coming in behind him. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not actually going to be in full control of the company. I, I think, uh, you know, we saw Larry Page do that with Google when he brought in um, Sandara Pinchet. Mm -hmm. uh, Page was very much, you know, involved with the business, regardless of, you know, the titles involved and so on. So I, I'm not sure that Bezos is not going to be intimately involved with what goes on at Amazon. I do think it creates an opportunity for plausible, uh, plausible deniability if there was ever a congressional, you know, uh, look at what he's doing in this company. But other than that, yeah, I, I don't see a real big change in power. I, I think about uh, the Sundar Pichai uh, testimony, w w how he kind of just is effusive and doesn't really answer any questions. I mean, you can see right. the kind of same, you know, business model being replicated here, for lack of a better term. Let's talk about leadership. You know, in your book, you talk about how a leader's pursuit of greatness for their company is important, but it's not enough. What separates those that are able to achieve greatness from those that can't? Well, I think a big part of... Um being a leader is uh, establishing honesty, uh, some, you know, making sure you're somebody you can be counted on. Your people see that. Uh, transparency is another one. It builds trust. Ultimately, you want passion too, right? And the reason for that is it gains followership. The more that the leader can show that he, you know, he's really into uh, driving success within the business, the more likely um, staffers will follow along. And then also you've got to be kind of a team builder or a curator of talent. And I think that's a major thing that uh, a lot of leaders sort of fall short on. And that's mm -hmm. surrounding themselves with an incredible team that can really get them over the finish line. You know, one of those things you hear is that anybody can be a manager, but it takes a special something, you know, to be a leader, actually. Is that one of the things you think we're suffering from now uh, in corporate environments is a lack of real leadership, people willing to stand up for their beliefs and tell their boss they may be wrong? It just doesn't seem like there's a lot of that in today's corporate world. I think you're right, John, and, and, and you hit it right on the head with the distinction between management and leadership. Uh, big difference. I mean, a leader is going to provide that vision. They're going to articulate something that's compelling and engaging, uh, something that people want to be part of. And, and that's what separates someone who's a leader from a manager who's kind of just making sure that work's happening day to day and, you know, schedules are being met, budgets are being met and that kind of thing. That's a little different. Uh, a true leader is able to step up and um, put something out there that people want to get behind. Yeah, it, you know, it's intoxicating, too, to work for someone who really is a leader and believes in what they're doing. Uh, you know, and sometimes that can only come when you're working for somebody who's created uh, the vision themselves. And that's what's important. The other thing, too, I wanted to ask you about is what, uh, what's up with these billionaires and uh, missions to space? You got uh, Jeff Bezos <laughs> with Blue Origin, Elon Musk with SpaceX. You know, I used to like to play with Legos when I was a little kid. Does that mean when I become a billionaire, I'm going to build uh, ships and send them to space? I think this is interesting. I, I guess so. I mean, I, I, I imagine that there's money in it, right? So, <laughs> That's yeah, a good so. point. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, why do why do people to... rob banks? That's because where the money is. I, I got you. I got you there. But let's. Yeah, uh, I mean, lastly, uh, I was kind of a joke question there, and I, I was just trying to have a little fun with it. But let's also, let's also talk about something more serious, and that's what's happening in New York right now with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Seven different women have accused him of sexual harassment or other things. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's getting any better for the governor. Another thing you talk about is a toxic culture, and it you know, apparently seems like that was the case with the New York governor. What do you think should be done to fix it? Yeah, I mean, in, in my book, Indispensable, Build and Lead, uh, uh, Company Customers Can't Live Without, I, I talk uh, quite a bit about culture. And, and the thing with uh, 
changing a toxic culture is first and foremost, you've got to accept responsibility for what's going on, particularly if you're at the top of the organization, because people really mimic your behavior. So you set the tone, regardless of what you say, it's how you behave. People are watching your feet, not necessarily listening to every word you utter. So the very first thing is accept responsibility. The second thing I, I would recommend also is bring in a third party, somebody uh, outside who's got an objective point of view to help you reshape the culture. And then ultimately you want to institute new policies and procedures and programs and things, and then hold people accountable. And that's really the formula I talk about in the book. All right, that'll do it for this edition of In-Depth.